Our next speaker is a research fellow in biomedical engineering. Please welcome Frank Winteroth. Me with a little more whiskers. My colleague Kyle Holman and I have been using, uh, studying acoustic mi uh, microscopy as an imaging tool to study both from a research as well as a clinical perspective. Research insofar as understanding disease processes in cells and tissues and find better diagnostic procedures so that we can improve them from a hospital perspective. And a clinical pers uh, from a clinical standpoint, to understand better LASIK procedures. Approximately 1% to 2% of patients that undergo LASIK procedures do, are not able to do it very, very well. So counting the thousands of patients that it counts to, it's imperative to change it. This is currently the benchtop prototype we have, and we're going to be moving on to uh, a clinical pro prototype which is going to be used in the future. It's a safe, non-invasive, non-destructive mode of uh, accurately imaging cells and tissues, and it can be applied in a clinical sense. And uh, that's what right now is a tissue scan that's out of 3D model. This is the scanning procedure itself. The transducer is that up and down portion that you see right there that's imaged right inside of a tank which contains the tissue itself. Pay attention to that little uh, monitor on the left side because we're going to go, to go get back to it on a later time. This is the schematic of the basic setup. The transducer with respect to the tissue sample with, that's inside of the water tank and with mountain pins. <laughs> that's all I need to say about that one, guys. Okay, now, the difference between the transducers, a conventional transducer that's used in OB labs uses low frequency uh, and high, low, longer focal lengths, therefore thicker materials. Ours, on contrast, is the opposite. Very thin, we're not able to have very good penetration, but we can very easily image cells and tissues. What you're seeing here are two images. The top row are conventional histology images of one on the left side uh, is a non-cellularized scaffold and on the right side is a tissue scaffold that's fully mature. The uh, acoustic uh, counterparts are on the bottom, and you can see a dramatic difference between the non-cellular one and the tissue scaffold on the right side, a bright beam which indicates growth and development for those cells, which strongly suggests that we are able to accurately image the growth and development of those cells. Here we have a top-down view of the non-cellular control scaffold, which is nothing, you see high variations, whereas the more mature material is on the right side, and you can see that it's being very, very uh, uniform as a consequence of the homogeneity of the tissues. We then decided to actually do a disturbance, which is between a stressed and unstressed. Namely, we wanted to image a disease condition which the imaging system can actually be able to pick up. The left side shows very in uniformity. The right side shows high variance, as you can see, much greater than in a control scaffold, which is evident of how we can image disease processes. We then wanted to translate this more toward a clinical perspective, which is, what we want, uh, which is our main objective, in, particularly for the LASIK scanning procedures that I mentioned. First off, here we have a, a set of uh, B scans that are similar to what you just saw, showing day four through six, very, very little growth and development, but by day seven, the white arrows are indicative of the growth and full maturity of the cells that are growing on top of that bioscaffold, strongly suggesting that we are able to show growth and development in a non-invasive, accurate means using the, uh, the same acoustic measurement system that we have. Next. <laughs> okay. Notice the mechanical compressor by the indicative, indicative of the red arrow. This is what's actually going to be looking at the physical properties of the cells using a strain mechanism system. And uh, what we do is we are going to place it over the scaffold and be able to show, in the, as shown by this illustration here, clearly indicates the position of the transducer relative to the tissue specimen and a photo illustration showing the actual scanning procedure. We can then transfer this over to an actual patient, as shown in the next slide, which shows a schematic of the image. We have an accurate, uh, we have an adaptable immersion tank. The patient would be sedated, and the actual compressor would, as well as the transducer, would be directly over the patient, and the scanning procedures would only take about three to four minutes. This would actually improve on the amount of accuracy to be able to qualify whether or not the patient would be able to qualify, would be adaptable and suitable for the LASIK scanning procedures, as well as diagnose other vision disorders, including glaucoma and a rare disease known as keratoconus, which affects about 100,000 patients. Rare, but still very important. 
Future studies, we want to look at elasticity, stress strain analyses to better assess disease versus normal tissues, further promote the LASIK screening methods, and then finally image and analyze cells development in animal models. That means that we're actually going to be using live specimens to be able to accurately look at the uh, growth and development of cells and be able to assess better, better assess disease processes. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Greg.